Welcome back, everyone, in studio today. We have John Olgin. Thank you so much for taking the time with, with us. Well, thank you for having me. Perfect. And he's, he's actually a professor at El Paso Community Col College, a physics and astronomy professor. So you yes. know a lot about the eclipse coming up. I sure do. Yes. Perfect. So first one, on April 8th, this eclipse is a total eclipse. Now, what is the difference between this eclipse and the annual eclipse that we saw in October? So the eclipse that we're going to be having is where the moon is, a, is in the right position where it can actually cover most, um, all of the, the entire sun. But the annual eclipse, it was at a distance further away from uh, Earth. And so it was only going to give a ring, like when it would go in front of the sun, it would still leave a ring around uh, that the sun and it was a little bit further from, from us so it gives us that, uh, that kind of perspective so it's going to be a little bit different even though we're only going to get about a little over 80 percent around 81 percent coverage here in El Paso area um, we're going to still be in a, in a pretty prime spot because of our, our location and the climate that we have here and hopefully we won't have any too many clouds <laughs> but I think we're going to be good. I know Cross Murphy is watching that cloud coverage and it's we actually got a nice view 80 percent of it so what makes the eclipse so special with the 80 percent that we're seeing the duration and the path here to El Paso as well as in Texas? Well it's, it's, it's one of those unique times where we actually had the path of the eclipse come like from last year come near the El Paso area, especially now this one coming also very close to the El Paso area as well. We've been very fortunate to actually have that kind of coverage and so it's a very unique opportunity for everybody to go out really cap be captivated by this kind of event safely obviously <laughs> yes. right very safely yes. and we'll go i mean there's some special glasses regarding that and special filters that you can put on your telescope for that but i mean it's a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about astronomy and also about our own climate and how our own climate actually responds how the weather responds to effects of a solar eclipse like this Perfect. And then what we just talked to you said, it's very important to be safe. What type of glasses and lenses do you need and how important is it that you have these when this eclipse is happening? Right. So it's really important to actually have the, uh, the proper kind of eyewear. I have, I have some uh, glasses right here. Uh, these are ISO approved and these are eclipse glasses that you can actually use safely to, to view the sun. And so basically you would just put them on like you would do any kind of glasses, but make sure that you know, you, there aren't any kind of you know, cracks or anything within the actual film that you have, the protective layer. And also on a, on a telescope like this, what you can also do is buy sp special filters that will be very much like the ones that you would see in these glasses, but you can actually then use this to see the sun. Just make sure that you have actually put it over your telescope properly and have a proper fit, and then you should everything should be fine. Perfect, but mm -hmm. very important that you have these. Right. Yeah, you don't want, you don't want to burn a, a hole in your retina. No, no just just that, so. <laughs> definitely something that you don't want to do. So when is the next total eclipse after this one? Because it's not something that right. we see every day. Right, so the next total eclipse in the United States won't be happening for at least another 20 years. So this is like a great opportunity to do it now. <laughs> so, Take advantage of it. Right, exactly. I think the next one, there's another one happening in Europe next, like in two years from now, but Unless you really want to go take that trip, I would say take advantage of, of this event on the 8th. You've heard it from John. Take advantage of it. Now, EPCC is actually holding an event for the total eclipse. What can you tell us about that? What more? What activities will you have? What should people know? So we have a ton of activities actually for that event. So what we have is we have a guest speaker from Mexico that's going to be talking about the impacts of eclipses on Mesoamerica and actually uh, today's culture and also in the past. Uh, we talk about some of the things like, um, I guess, superstitions that we've had before <laughs> regarding that and then also how the, the eclipse has actually benefited uh, other cultures and studying it how it impacted their society then we're also going to have a group from texas tech that's actually going to come out and actually talk about special eyewear and how to protect your eyes during an eclipse we're also going to be uh, actually televising actually well live streaming actually wow. live streaming through epcc tv um, and they're going to be will be connected with the NASA program, uh, the GLOBE program. We're also going to recruit people from all ages to go out and actually take measurements of the weather, like temperature data, cloud data, and that's important because, believe it or not, during an eclipse, it, the sun actually affects a lot of how the weather ha occurs here on our planet. And so what happens is during an eclipse, as the sun starts to, I guess you could say, fade away, the clouds also start to react to that and a lot of scientists including myself are interested in looking at how that cloud dissipation or the cloud formation dissipates during an eclipse we want to see that and the way to capture it is using the nasa globe app observer app and we encourage a lot of people to actually go out there and take these observations in fact there's a little eclipse uh protocol little app on the 
on the phone that you can actually collect data for NASA and you become a, an official NASA collaborator. Thanks, so, so hands on really, really getting oh, yes. into it. It's super cool that data is being used for that. Now, last question, Ooh. it's kind of a funny one. Our okay. anchor, Jessica Gonzalez, she want, there's a lot of superstitions when it comes mm -hmm. to the solar eclipse. Now, what can you tell me? I know there's some that it can affect your pregnancy, you can go blind during it, or it just brings mm. bad juju. What can you tell me? <laughs> well, it'll, it'll blind you if you look at the sun. So don't look at the sun without the proper eyewear. I can't, I can't stress that enough. But again, these are superstitions that, that have actually gone through for many, many generations. And so, you know, there's, no, there's nothing really to those kind of things. In fact, there's nothing to them at all. Uh, but it's always kind of fun to see how people have carried these these notions throughout generations and then we try to clear them up and we try to have people enjoy this, the, the solar eclipse for what it is. It's a very awesome phenomenon that everybody should actually safely enjoy. Perfect and exciting and again April 8th this amazing event is happening celestial event. John thank you so much for taking the time much. with us. Perfect and if you just joined us and you just missed our community conversation you can view this one and past ones on our website kfoxtv.com. We'll be right back.